So I'd like to introduce Alan. Uh, he is probably one of the leaders in robotics in the dental industry. Uh, really interesting background. Um, and it's going to be uh, a real contribution to have him be speaking at the summit. My name is Alon Moses, I'm CEO and co-founder of Neosis. We develop a robot-assisted guidance system for dental implant surgery. Uh, we have a strong background in robotic-assisted technology previously at a company called Mako Surgical, which worked in robotic surgery for orthopedics. So it's a, a great team of solid engineers, and now with FDA clearance, we're starting to commercialize this year uh, and really build out the company. How long has your company been in existence? We had our first employee since about 2012. Uh, so when that's coincided with our first round of funding. We've since gotten a few more rounds of funding. Uh, we were 10 employees just a few months ago and now have expanded to uh, 25 to 30. Wow. Uh, it's a lot of growth in the last recent while. I guess, well, robotics is hot. So, so, it is. so exactly what, what, what are you providing and what market are you targeting? So we focus right now in the dental industry. The procedure specifically cleared by the FDA for, uh, the, with the use of our system is dental implant surgery. Uh, we have filed patents for other procedures. We just got one issued for sinus lifts. So there's a lot of interesting oral surgery procedures or dental applications that we could uh, expand our platform into. Wow. And the, and the delivery uh, of care, how much of it is done by a robot? How much is done by a human provider at this point? So to date, before our system hit the market, um, it was almost all done, uh, for the most part, by hand. There's not a lot of digital technology in terms of the, the surgical care that's given. Uh, there is some technology like CVCT, uh, cone beam CT scans that's done preoperatively. There's some technology like milling machines that is used postoperatively where you're milling the crown and placing that on at the end. Uh, but the digital technology and, and more importantly, robotic technology hasn't really hit the intraoperative portions where you really care about having digital technology the most. So our system really bridges that gap uh, where there's really only kind of plastic and analog technology today. I, I'm wondering, being in the industry and knowing the, uh, the politics and the way people are um, uh, or organized, have you been already approached by the big suppliers for acquisition? Uh, so we're always talking to uh, potential partners in the industry. The... Um, Dental implant manufacturers obviously have a strong interest in this area. They're working on improving the plastic surgical guides to help place their implants better. Uh, it's really hard to differentiate a dental implant these days. Uh, they're looking more and more similar. Um, and then the other kinds of industry partners that we've been talking to are capital equipment manufacturers. These are companies like Dent Supply Serona who are making cone beam CT, intraoral scanners, crown milling machines, all the kinds of technology that really starts to approach what the holy grail in dental, which is the digital dental workflow. Um, but all of these companies still miss that, that key piece right in the middle intraoperatively uh, for, for truly dynamic digital uh, guided surgery. This isn't to scare the listener, but how close are we to, to you know, market? So our system is actually on the market now. Uh, so we just got FDA clearance at the end of last year. So our system is currently being used to guide dental implant surgery. I think one of the things that might um, ease your listeners a little bit is that it is a, it, it's an assistive system. Uh, the robot is always meant to be working with a human in the loop. The surgeon's hands are always on the drill. The robot essentially provides constraints based on a preoperative software plan. So the surgeon still uses what surgeons are good at, which is clinical judgment. They plan the software, they plan the, the case in the software ahead of time. And then during the surgery, they also have their clinical judgment as their hands are always on the drill. So if something is happening, uh, if they run into anything intraoperatively that was unanticipated, if the bone density wasn't what they liked, they are always in control. 
they can go back and change the software plan and then their hands are always on the drill so they're always getting a feel for what's going on yeah I, um I, that is wonderful at this moment in time, but I would assume this artificial intelligence, machine to machine learning, you know, the com complexity of, of how fast those machines can teach each other uh, over time, uh, that, that surgeon's hand will probably be less and less on the drill. And so that's going to be an interesting th time in dentistry when digital overtakes uh, the art, when science overtakes the art. How'd you get into this? Feel. It's an interesting path. Uh, it's a bit of a winding path. Uh, I started with uh, degrees in computer science, uh, bachelor's and master's from MIT, and worked in uh, graphics and image processing in Silicon Valley for a couple of years uh, in special effects for sports broadcasts. So if you've ever seen the yellow line in NFL football games or baseball pitch tracking, uh, I worked on a lot of that technology in the early days. And uh, I decided I wanted to come back to Miami. It's my hometown and got a PhD in biomedical engineering and worked at a company called Mako Surgical, which was doing robotic surgery for orthopedics. So we did um, robotics to guide uh, knee replacements, hip replacements. And that company did very well and sold to Stryker. And uh, my co-founder and I are very much interested in startups. I've always been in startups. And so we said, let's Let's start something new. And we looked at different medical markets that would be good fits for the kind of robotic technology that we know how to build. And um, also coincidentally, my, my father is a now retired endodontist no uh, after several <laughs> decades in the industry here in Miami. And uh, you know, we, we actually looked at endodontics first and it wasn't as great a clinical match. And then we looked at dental implants and it was just a home run, okay. made a lot of sense. And development must be much more quickly, having made all the mistakes in the past. Exactly. So you, yeah. You're able to move, and and you're and because you deliver, you get you get the equity coming in without too much. I hope, I think, without too much ruffle. Good for you. Good for you. Well, I'm I am so thrilled that you're going to be speaking at our conference. I just can't thank you enough for doing this. This is very exciting for me. It'll be exciting for the 400 people in the audience. You take care. Thank you again. You so too. Much.